Hello, theater goers. I'm Allie Effie. Shelter in Place gives me time to reflect on important choices I make that change my life. For example, when I moved from New York to LA in 1970, Allie in La La Land. Let's back up. In 1963, Lack of a college degree limits my career choices. My plan is to become a secretary. My motto, anything that's worth doing is worth doing well, means I give it my all. I learn to take shorthand at 146 words a minute and type at 62 words a minute. I do a good job and I'm proud of it. By 1968, I'm an executive secretary with an office at 30 Rock, a window overlooking Central Park, and a secretary of my own. The maturity that I bring to my nine to five career doesn't translate into my personal life. In my pseudo sophisticated lifestyle, a pattern emerges. Sitting in an upscale bar after work, hair in a French twist, black sheath and pearls, stiletto heels, smoking cigarettes and sipping scotch. I hate cigarettes and I hate scotch, but the ritual has become more important than the reality. Add to that my affairs with unavailable men and the heartbreak when it doesn't work out. After five years of Manhattan intensity and too many ghosts of relationships past, I feel like I'm swimming upstream and I'm getting tired. Elvis Presley to the rescue. My boss, Mr. D and his entourage fly to LA to finalize the details of a deal with Colonel Tom Parker to bring Elvis out of retirement and film what's now known as the 68 Comeback Special. My job is to take notes of the negotiations. Afterward, Colonel Parker compliments my boss on my demeanor. She sat in the back of the room, she said nothing. She did a good job. When I hear this, it's all I can take to bite my tongue. Later, the team relaxes by the pool at the Beverly Hills Hotel. I turn to my boss. Today is Halloween, it's 70 degrees, and I'm in a bathing suit. If we were back in New York, I'd be wearing a wool coat. He shakes his head. I knew I should never have brought you here. Too late, time for a change. The eternal spring of LA is more enticing than the frigid winter in New York. When I struggle with a major decision, I do survey research, ask all the people I trust what they think. Everyone says, don't go. You're a New Yorker. You'll never be happy in LA. They have nothing to say out there. You'll be back in six months. Are they right? I start second guessing. I can't sublet my rent control department in Soho. If I let it go, I can't come back. Here in Santa Cruz, you know that dilemma. When all else fails, there's nothing to be done but consult with a psychic astrologer. Not just any psychic astrologer, mind you. Maria Elise Crumeri is the astrologer for the Broadway musical Hair. If it's good enough for Hair, it's good enough for me. She gives me so much feedback, I'm scrambling to capture every word. One comment stands out. If you move at the right time in May, you will meet two men different from any man you have ever known. If you choose the right one, you will marry the first week of October the following year. That there's an auspicious time to move is exactly the counsel I need. Never mind that I don't know a soul on the left coast. I sell everything, say my tearful goodbyes, and in May 1970, I move from Manhattan to the wilds of LA. There's enough money in savings so I can take some time off. I may have missed the summer of love, but I'm ready to embrace my pseudo hippie period. Meandering down Sunset Strip, Braless and barefoot in my granny dress and love beads. At the farmer's market on Fairfax, I meet Herb. Energetically, he's cocky, 
bushy mustache, long wavy hair, balding on top. He wears tie-dye tank tops, uh, bell bottoms, and leather sandals. He's an ex-con who claims to be a Marxist poet. I did time with Huey Newton. I'm a white panther. I know about the Black Panther Party. What's a white panther? His answer is riddled with jargon from a manifesto he wrote in prison. Whenever I press him, his go-to response is, it's too complicated, you won't understand. Pay attention, Allie, he's condescending. On the other hand, he's 180 degrees different from any man I've known in New York. Just like the psychic predicted. This could be an alley in Wonderland adventure. What do you got to lose? In the end, more than I know. Herb and I start hanging out. Getting stoned on a regular basis is new behavior for me. I embrace my altered state and ignore the red flags. One day at the beach, he offers me peyote. Now is the perfect time to expand your consciousness. I'm already happily stoned. I'm a lightweight when it comes to mood altering substances. Not sure I want to expand my consciousness any further. I don't know what I'm getting myself into. He senses my hesitation. You'll be okay, I'll keep you safe. Well, he is the expert when it comes to drugs. Feeling like Alice through the looking glass, I nibble at the edge of the mushroom. You'll be okay, keeps running through my head. In no time at all, I'm more than okay. I am blissed out. Wandering down the beach in my bikini, going up to every man I see getting in his face as I ask, are you my Prince Charming? And then floating down the beach, not waiting for an answer, loving my psychedelic fairy tale until I run out of possible princes. Oh no, I don't want to come down. I'll end it. I'm a Pisces. I'll end as I began. I will become one with the ocean. Without hesitation, I turn and walk into the waves. As I submerge without any intention of resurfacing, I am at peace, serene, until I feel Herb's arms around me dragging me to shore. I'm bummed. I try again, but he won't let me go. Hours later, wrapped in a blanket around the bonfire, we make a pact. He won't give me anything stronger than pot, and then I won't go off the deep end. Drugs are what send Herb to prison, but I rationalize his behavior, believing he just shares his stash with friends. Until one night I show up at his apartment unannounced and catch him in the middle of a drug deal. On the table are baggies and scales, piles of cash, weed and some kind of white powder and weird man. He glares at me as he grabs my arm. What are you doing here? You should never have come. You don't understand. I could go back to prison for dealing. Suddenly, <laughs> open up. LA police, open up. <laughs> he, he lets go of my arm as he and the men clear the table. The pounding continues and I crawl into a corner, make myself as small as possible. There's no exit, no way out. My mind is reeling. I'm weeping, terrified I'm going to jail. In what seems like a million years, finally the voice on the other side of the door says, just kidding, and bursts in. Amidst the chaos and the fight that I know is about to begin, I escape. What am I thinking? I move across the country to have an authentic way of life. And instead, I put myself at risks I could never imagine. 
Mr. D's parting words echo in my head. Be careful out there, Allie. Bad things happen to pretty little things. What's my takeaway message? I'm not listening to myself. It's time to pivot. Which leads me to a new age commune. The day I move into their crumbling stucco mansion in the Hollywood Hills, I meet David, who looks like a Greek god. As we gaze into each other's eyes, it's love at first sight for both of us. <laughs> I've never been attracted to a man who's spiritual. Is this the psychic's prediction coming true? Is there an October marriage in my future? <laughs> well, that's a story for another time. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to tell a story from Alley in Wonderland, My Kaleidoscopic Life. <laughs>